Craftware House followers. I'm really excited about this piece today. So we are going to be making one of those circle decor pieces that have been really trendy on Pinterest. Um, and I've also seen pre-made in stores. Um, but we are going to be making ours fall looking. So a few things I do have here. I have that dried eucalyptus. I got that burgundy color. Um, it's super beautiful. I have two things of twine. I have a gel stain walnut. So we're going to color this. I have a white magnolia color here. And then I also have a burnt sienna. So for that fall color. And we're going to go ahead. I think I'm going to use that on this welcome piece here. And then I also have some ribbon to create a little bow on this. A few other things I am going to need is... I do have a couple brushes and foam brushes. I'm also going to use some painter's tape, masking tape, or washi tape will work as well. And then you're going to want um, to have some paper towels handy. So let's get started. I'm just going to go ahead and pull everything away from me right now. And we're going to start with that gel stain. So we're going to go with that gel stain and I'm just going to kind of go all the way across on this. I don't want too much. I want to use the least amount possible, but I need enough just to cover my whole board. So I might have to go in and add some. Um, one thing I do like about this gel stain is once we put a layer on, just like any other paint, we could go ahead and um, put another layer on, let it dry, and that other layer of stain is just going to, if you do another one, it'll just make it a tad darker. Okay, looks like I need a little bit more. We're going to go along the sides here. Oops. Put a little bit too much on this side. A little bit of this really does go a long way. I have found in making other projects with this gel stain. And just like any stain, so we're going to put it on and then we're going to wipe away any of the excess. And you're really going to see all of the grain on any piece you're working on really pop through. So again, I'm just making sure I cover that whole board. You want to make sure um, you do have a surface that's easy to um, clean up behind you. Because this will stain whatever is, um, like if you're working on a table, it will end up staining your table. All right, so I have that nicely covered. So now I'm coming in with some paper towels. And I'm just going to wipe away that access. So wiping it away. And you'll see that grain kind of start to pop through. It's very beautiful. I love the color that this gives that, especially if you're working with a natural, like just a, non-stained wood and then you come in with this gel stain just gives it a really great color i'm gonna grab some more paper towels here just making sure i get all of that off okay get all my edges Now you guys can really see that green that's kind of popped through on there. And then again, like I said, I could go ahead and let this dry and just put another layer right over. But I am, this is a color I love. Um, it works very well for me and my needs for this project. But you could go ahead and um, do another layer, or if you wanted, you could go ahead and flip it to the back side. Use the back side, which also is the same. So, has this back color. You could stain the whole back side if you want. 
um, if you don't want to see that back side. And then you could test a little spot so you're not ruining possibly your front side. Um, I always suggest in testing it just in case you aren't in love with it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry. Um, while it's drying, go ahead and decide what you want your top and your bottom to be. I'm probably going to go this way, so I'm just going to give it a little bit, and then we'll be right back. Okay, you guys, it is all dry. It doesn't take that long to dry, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up my vinyl here. And then you're gonna want some scissors because I don't wanna keep this in the air. Um, I'm just gonna cut this off. One thing though is I am gonna keep the bottom of this because I think this would make a really cute project to add with a, another vinyl. So I'm thinking, you know, February, it's um, Valentine's Day. So I could get a love where it just says love vinyl. And then I could say is in the air. I think that'd be really cute. So I am going to go ahead and save this, but we are just going to use the fall. And then I am going to use my masking tape now. I want this to come. I'm not quite halfway. I want to go down further than halfway. You could do halfway, it's just kind of gonna be your preference here, but we're gonna go straight across with the tape. Making sure your line is as straight as it can be. And then we're gonna do our bottom line here. And I like to hold the, or have that vinyl in there, so I'm making sure that my piece is wide enough. So we're going to go ahead and put paint this and put the fall inside here. You could end up using a um, ruler or measuring tape. I tend to eyeball it. Um, it's just going to kind of, again, be a preference on how you craft at home. But you can get it pretty straight by using this. All right. So I'm just going to really make sure this tape is nice and adhered to my board because I don't want any paint to be seeping through. Just tuck those under. Okay, I'm going to come in with that Magnolia White. So you can either just put it right on the board like I'm going to do or you could have a paper plate or a painter's palette. Um, something that's just kind of easy to clean up. But this is a big enough surface that I'm painting that I can go ahead and just put it right on there. And I'm doing small amounts and spreading it out. So it's not too thick on there. And I'm able to work the paint. I want to make sure I get my edges here. Go along the circle. And then we're going to paint across. So if you are painting and you're getting these like lines, um, a few things that you can do at home. Um, once you get everything nicely covered, you can kind of go over with just a little bit of paint on your brush and just do some back, all the way back and forth um, strokes with your brush. So that should help eliminate all the way side to side. That should help eliminate any of your streaks. Um, another thing you can do is put two coats. So making sure you're doing this method of all the way to one large strokes, all the way to one side of the board to the next, um, that will help. And then doing, again, that second layer. You'll want to do both if you aren't liking um, the way that this ends up drying. I really personally like doing the one layer. Um, the white is just a little bit muted, which I think plays very well in with fall. So for my project, I am going to be doing just a 
one layer of paint. You can go ahead and do another one, or you could even put a thicker layer of paint. Um, just gonna come down to a preference. I am gonna go ahead and let this dry, but while we're letting it dry, we're gonna bring in that welcome board, okay? So we have the board to the side, it is drying, and now we're gonna come in with that cheap paint. And again, I could put it right on the surface, or I do have my glass media I'm working with, um, Matt from Tim Holtz, so I can put a little paint on here and then clean it up once I'm done. So I'm just gonna go along, paint all of the letters. If you're seeing that you're getting any in like the crevices here, just take your brush, kind of push it through. You can also take a Q-tip to help you with that or um, a toothpick can kind of help you get in those crevices so that they're not sticking. Just gonna put a little more paint out here for me. You don't need a lot of paint to finish this project, which is really nice because then you're gonna have some leftovers and you can create something else, or maybe you want to create a whole nother board to give to somebody that you know. Okay. I'm just gonna get my paint out of my L here, squish it on out. And my C here is kind of a little dirty. Okay, you guys, I wanna make sure that I am kind of brushing a little bit of paint on the edges of my letters that you're gonna be able to see. Cause this will be on the board. I wanna make sure that it's not gonna stand out. It's gonna blend in with that orange the best it can. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just don't wanna see that color. So again, just kind of going along all the edges so that that won't be visible to anybody. So you guys, I didn't put very much paint on when I did this. And I do think I see some spots. That it's just not going to be colored enough for me. So I am going back in with that paint. Starting in the spots that I did at the very beginning. And just painting them. Just another kind of layer. I could let this fully dry. Um, it's mostly dried, so um, I am okay with just going over with another layer. But it's just a little bit too rustic for me. Because I want this welcome to really pop out and stand out. And then we're just gonna go ahead and let that dry. Just give it a couple minutes, or you could go ahead and hit it with your heat gun. But I'm gonna go ahead and wash my brushes and wipe up my surface, and then we'll come right back. Okay, you guys, my surface is clean. My board is almost dried, and so is my word. I am, since I'm not gonna do another layer of paint, I am gonna go ahead and pull back and see if my lines are clean. One thing about this project that's really nice is since you're painting this line first and you don't really need any space above it or below it, you kind of have some room for forgiveness. So if you didn't get your tape down very well, you could go ahead and wherever that bleed mark is, you could just put a piece of tape right above it, really get it down and repaint it. Um, or you could go ahead and just take that brush if you have a steady hand and just go all the way across. Um, I don't have a steady hand, so I would recommend, if you're like me, I would recommend putting a piece of tape just a little ways above it and just trying to fill in in that gap. But hopefully you went and put your tape down correctly and you're not having any issues and all your lines came up pretty nice. You will have some little bleed through marks, but that's also gonna happen in hand painting. So 
I would not worry about it. I am going to go ahead and let this fully dry before I put my vinyl, but again, I just want to show you that's going to fit right on in there. And we're going to go ahead and grab that jute rope now. So again, we have two of these little spools. And I did forget to mention earlier, but we do have some hot glue that we're using in this project. And we're going to start with this top layer here. So I'm going to wrap it so that the jute goes here and at the bottom. See where that white line is? I'm going to hold that jute right there. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to put some hot glue right below it. I like to make sure I'm getting it as close to the edge on that this first initial one. And then I just kind of hold it there. Be careful of your fingers. I don't want you getting burnt. And then we're going to start our wrap. So we'll go all the way across. And again, we're going to do the hot glue on the same the same thing as the other side. I'm just gonna do that line. I am holding it just below. This is pretty thick um, jute rope. I am able to kind of press the top of the ribbon down into the hot glue. If you don't have long enough fingernails, um, I suggest using a pencil if you want to keep that held down nicely. And then we're just going to keep wrapping it all the way around. Um, if you want, you could put a little hot glue right on the edges. That will help hold it pretty nicely. I'm going to go and put it right in the middle, though. Because I'm not needing much hot glue. Okay. And then I like to try to run my next one right down the middle. Um, I have found though, if I don't hot put just like a tad hot glue on this jute rope, it will roll. So I just put a little hot glue and I go over to the other side and I'm gonna put a little hot glue too. Now I could put the hot glue on the back too, it's just going to be a preference. But just a little, you don't have to put too much. And I think that's all the jute I'm going to need here. So I'm going to put another little section of hot glue right here. in nice and glued on and then I'm going to cut off. So if you have any other spots on the back that you're nervous might kind of roll, you can easily just pop some hot glue. And catch your ribbons on the back. It should not move again after getting these two initial corners and then you're getting that third little dab of glue, but look how cute that already is. Woo! I'm so excited. Okay, so I have the other spool of ribbon and we're gonna start it the exact same. So again, Putting a little hot glue on that back side. Just getting it initially secured very well so we don't have to worry about it moving on us. And then we're gonna wrap it to the other side and we're gonna do some hot glue over here.
again, I just kind of hold it there until it kind of gets a little dry. Um, again, if it's not dry, you're gonna, you could hit it and pull some of it, or you might be able to, um, you might kind of pull the string too tight and knock it loose from the hot glue. So let's see. We're gonna wrap it around on this top side, but I'm gonna show you guys on this one what I would do if you wanna add a little extra glue. So I would just put a little daub right before it goes around the board. Just like that. So it should hold secure there. And then I'll again do a little glob of hot glue right on the back side of here too. So then right off the bat, every strand is gonna have a hot glue secured and I don't have to worry about it. And then we're gonna bring this right down the center, just like our other one. And I'm gonna hot glue only the one side here. And this time we're gonna do it a little different. I'm gonna come right down in between the two. Just so you guys can see, there's different ways. You don't have to hot glue it the same every time. You just wanna hot glue it in a way that it's gonna hold secure for you. Oops. And again, before I move that, I'm gonna let it all dry. And then I'm gonna snip this ribbon, or jute, sorry. and it's nice and secure. Now, if you really wanted, you could put a little bit of glue in the center of all these and kind of hide it um, with a jute rope, but you really don't need to. It's gonna be well enough secure on the back side um, that you should not come across any issues. Okay, so this is all dry, and now we're gonna come in with that vinyl. So you're gonna wanna peel your top layer back. So this is called your transfer sheet. You just want to go corner to corner. If you're having problems with it not sticking to this top layer, just lay it down flat. Take a um, credit card or you could use a popsicle stick, anything with really a blunt edge and just rub the top surface. So that should make sure it should help your um, vinyl stick to this transfer sheet. So that top layer. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this fall off centered here. And I'm just gonna place it right here. And I like to rub it a little bit with my fingers at first and then I'll come in with, again, that credit card, a squeegee or um, popsicle stick, anything with that flat edge gonna help it adhere to this wood. And then I'm gonna peel back corner to corner. And on this, I kinda go back and forth a little bit. I find it helps me, um, but everybody has their own tricks. If you have it where it might not be, I was kinda hoping it might stick. If you have it where it might be sticking to your vinyl, you can just, Push it back, rub the lettering down, and then peel your corner. All right, you guys, there we have our fall. So beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna bring in that welcome. And I just want that welcome to come right in there. So I'm just gonna hot glue this. And I kind of want to put the hot glue down quick. You could use E6000 as well if you have that and don't want to use hot glue. I'm just kind of going as quick as I can. I want to make sure I hear the whole word so that I'm getting a little hot glue all over. And then I'm just going to place him right above that jute and push him down. Ooh, 
I love it. It's so cute already, you guys. I'm so excited about this piece. All right, so now you guys, we're going we're coming in with that eucalyptus. So I'm just gonna kind of find some that I like that I want to cut off. Um, you could cut off a whole stem. It's very easy. Um, I would suggest if you end up doing that, wherever you are gonna have the. When we do this, if you have something sticking off, I would just make sure you're cutting your branch all the way to the end. Um, Cause realistically you could only use one of these and then you could use this whole um, rest of your grouping of eucalyptus to decorate other fall decor. Um, it just puts a great scent into the house. It's just really enjoyable. So I think I'm gonna use this one here. And again, I'm just using scissors. You might have to give it a, a little bit of oomph. And I like this one here. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and use one more. So now you just kinda wanna lay this on the board. However you might want to have it, have your eucalyptus um, with a bow over it hanging. I think I'm probably gonna do something like this. And again, I'm putting it all down with hot glue. Let's put this side down first. So I'm using three pieces. You could use as many as you want. And I'm gonna hot glue anything that's touching on this board. So I'm gonna go along the stem here and the leaves. And then I'm gonna lay it right on down on the board. And just apply that pressure. So I'm gonna do that for a little bit until it is fully adhered. Um, again, you could probably use E6000 for this as well. Um, just gonna depend on what you have handy at home for your adhesive. And then I'm gonna come in with this piece. Again, hot glue all the way. And then I'm just gonna hold it. Let it adhere. And then I'm gonna come in with one more piece. I think this is a little too long, so I'm just gonna trim it. I like the way that looks a little bit better. So now again, just hot glue. All the way down the stem. I'm even hitting the um, leaves. I'm just gonna hold and let it adhere. And now the plan is to go ahead and make a bow. So it's just gonna get glued and hide that little spot where everything is combined, okay? So I'm not gonna do anything fancy with a bow because I know how bow making is hard for everyone. So I'm just gonna tie like I would a um, shoelace. I'm probably using about 30 inches here, you guys. That's a give and take. Probably maybe a little bit more, but about 30 inches of ribbon. Just gonna tie a shoelace bow. So I just took the two bunny ears and looped them. And then you'll fluff out. And then we're gonna go ahead and give the ribbon just a little bit of a, you're gonna fold it the end. And then I cut um, downward at an angle. So the outside of the ribbon is the downward part of the, the outer uh, triangle. 
And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. So inside is the upper part of the triangle and we're cutting out to the outer side. Ooh, my scissors on, are getting dull on me. All right, so then we have a nice little ribbon. We're gonna go ahead and glue that down. And all I'm gonna do is just put glue right on the back of this. Nothing fancy. And then I'm just gonna put it right on the eucalyptus and hold. And you're just gonna let that dry. I like to apply that pressure so that I know all the um, glue adhered and the ribbon itself got adhered to that um, eucalyptus. And then I kinda like to add a little texture to my ribbon. This does have wire in it. So I just kind of bend it with my fingers. You can bend them the same, you can bend them opposite. Maybe I'll bend them the same this time. And there you have it. Now you have a cute little fall decor piece, you guys. You can hang this on your wall, you could put this on your door, it just really depends. Um, if you end up not liking how far something is sticking out too with the eucalyptus, I do want to point out, I could just add a little bit more hot glue and just hold it there. Let it dry. You can always adjust it. All right, you guys, look at that, it is so cute. I'm excited to go and put this on my door. Um, if you are gonna be hanging it, you can easily take the jute, just flip this over. We're gonna tie this in a knot. If you're wanting to tie this on the door, you would just take hot glue, put them right on the back side, apply that pressure, and then once all dried, I could go ahead and apply more glue all the way down, or I can just go ahead and trim this. And then it's ready to hang. I got a hanger and all, all, all without having to drill. You could easily drill into this piece though and just, again, attach some jute from there. All right, you guys, I'm so excited about this piece. It is so cute. Um, what a fun fall decor piece with that burnt orange and that lovely burgundy. And I even have more ribbon and paints to play with to create some more fall fun. All right, you guys, thank you for crafting with me and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.